What's up everyone, Vu of Envu Films, and I am back with another idiotic video for you to watch. And today's video is idiotic because I'm gonna to try to show you how I edit my sneak peek videos by showing you my actual edit timeline and going through all the clips. Um, like I said before, this will give you some idea and give you some tips here and there, but at the end of the day, um, I feel like edit flow and rhythm is something you have to develop over time as you edit more and more videos. So you always have to go out and shoot and edit and shoot and edit or just edit whatever to be able to to better get a feel of how to edit and your rhythm and flow and all that stuff. And, um, you know, that is something I'm still trying to learn and develop myself, uh, which is why I kind of hesitated to do this video just because... I'm still learning. I'm trying to get I'm still trying to get better as an editor and I just don't know if, you know, I have the chops to be able to do this kind of thing, but a lot of people were asking, so I said, "Hey, you know what? Might as well. I'll try to do it." Um with that being said, I know I already showed this video before on another video, but, you know, just for context and for people who hasn't seen it, I'm going to show the video again and then we're going to jump into the edit. All right guys, so now I am in the editor and of course the first screen is just, you know, my logo, Envil Films, trash, whatever. So obviously, you know, the first thing I do is I drop in the music. I make sure it's a 24p timeline and I put the music in. Um, and as you can see, these are just basic like fades from the song so it just kind of drops in and out um you know i try you know these are sneak peek trailers and they're usually a minute and under and this one i tried to do exactly a minute so you know it stops at a minute and this particular song starts off kind of like a building type of song and then it drops and then it goes into like you know the crescendos and the ending and all that stuff so first thing first when i start editing is i put three adjustment layers and ignore these cuts because I cut these adjustment layers, these layers because this is where my color grade is. So this is where I put my LUT in. Um, and this is like, you know, adding contrast, things of that nature to uh, the grade to like, add a little bit more to my initial base LUT. And this adjustment layer is simply just a crop so I put in a crop, which you could find here. Just type in crop on Premiere Pro. Drop the crop in and you see that as I do 12.1 and 12.1% up and top and bottom. So that it gives you those fake me out YouTube doucher uh, cinema bars because it just looks straight up filmic, cinematic, YouTube trash uh, filmmaking. So. With that said, the first shot is obviously a drone shot. And as you can see, I rotated it. Um, this is not, you know, gangster drone flying. This is just a standard drone shot that I just pretty much did all the rotation effects in post. So let me just go ahead and drag it up here to show you. I'm gonna just remove attributes real quick. Uh, let's remove all the attributes. So this is the original drone shot. And to me, with that like epic violin sounds and this like epic sounding track, uh, 
just a simple push in drone shot wasn't enough. So I went ahead and I did like this uh, dolly zoom effect is what some uh, D bags call it online. I don't know what it's really called, but essentially what I do is I add a scale, a crop in to 125. Um, obviously standard is 100. I add 125, add a keyframe. And then I add in another keyframe that goes down to 100. So if you crop into the image and then you keyframe it back to normal, it creates a dolly zoom, like a zoom effect. So let me just remove this rotation real quick. Um, hold on. Let's see the best way for me to do this. All right, I'll just remove it and undo it. So, geez. so if you look here, without the rotation effect, you can see that it's doing that dolly zoom effect. So I'm gonna just go ahead and undo what I did earlier. And then now I put the rotation in, I just did like a uh, 9.6 rotation. Um, and then I keyframed it to go to the other side. And keep in mind that as you can see, I only did it up to negative 5.2 because if I did more than this, um, the image will start appearing like on the sides, like the crop uh, will be too much. See, see how like you see the black, the black bars there on the bottom right and top left. Um, that's why it's only, you know, I make sure that that doesn't happen towards the end of the clip. Um, so here's just playing that again. Pretty straightforward, correct? Yes. So continuing on, um, the next clip is a clip of the dress. And I did the same thing as I did with the drone where I did like a little bit of a push in and a rotation. And I try to keep the rotation the same direction. So as you can see, it is kind of rotating clockwise. The camera is going clockwise. So then here the camera is also going clockwise to keep that motion the same direction. And then this next shot is me um, handheld. And so the camera is also going clockwise. So camera going clockwise, camera going clockwise, camera going clockwise. And keep in mind that I am cutting with the music. So let's hear it again. Boom, boom, boop, 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 boom, boom, boop, 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 boom, boom, boom. So it's always on the beat here. So it's like boom, boom, and then I did a, uh, so this is pretty easy, okay? So this is just me towards the end here. This transition, uh, as this dress is going down, uh, I just start speed ramping it because, you know, it's a downwards swipe of the dress. And as you see towards the end here, it's the floor and all that stuff, but obviously, you don't notice it because I put a bit of a motion blur here. Uh, in this case, it is just Gaussian blur and towards the middle of the uh, transition, I put 60, uh, I guess is what to be 60% blurriness uh, keyframe there. And at the beginning it's zero um, and geez, it's a lot, diff it's a lot more difficult than I thought it'd be. Okay. so. And then another keyframe at the end of the clip at zero. So it goes from like, you know, zero to 60% and then back 60 to zero as it goes into the next clip. As you can see, um, that adjustment layer with the blur is just right almost in between where the two clips meet. And because of the speed and the blur, you know, it looks somewhat seamless, not perfect, but you know, good enough. So it's a downward shot going into another downward shot of the venue. And of course, with of course, some sound effects. So if I took the music off, um, you may be able to hear uh, just the sound effects. I don't know if you can be able to hear it, but um, yeah, I, there's some sound effects in here. So, oops, that's definitely not what I was trying to do. 
mute. So there's some, you know, definitely some sound design. I'll go through a little bit more in depth later. But uh, yeah, so here is that shot. And again, it's always to the beat. Good. Boom. See, so like, you have to always try to somewhat, it doesn't always have to match the beat, but it has to somewhat be in rhythm with the music that you chose. So in this case, boom, boom. And these are just pretty much just standard uh, shots. I didn't do anything with these. I don't think I did any scale. Oh, maybe I did. So this one, I also did a little bit of push in the scale. So I start off at 100, and then I started going towards about 117 push in. So this shot does have a bit of a push in scale in effect in post. Um, as does this have it? No, this one does not. I, this, is not this is a standard motion, no slow motion. This last shot is all uh, 24 frames per second. And I'm trying to, I'll try to explain the process of why I'm going from shot to shot. But essentially, right here, I'm starting to say like, okay, this is enough just like stuff. I mean, it's been already 15 seconds and you haven't even seen the couple yet. Um, so that's kind of out of character for me. Usually I try to... Uh, include the couple in pretty quick, but it's okay. Um, sneak peek trailers, uh, my goal is to always one, tell a story with every single uh, video that I do. And in this case, you can clearly see that as a story, a couple, they're getting married, they're gonna go through the event, you'll see, you know, as you go along. Um, it's a pretty basic story, okay? But uh, another thing is, you know, you wanna create a fee feeling, you want to create emotion, you want to elicit that out of the couple because they're trying to relive uh, that day that happened pretty much yesterday because again, these sneak peeks are done within 24 hours at the latest 48 hours after the wedding day. So they get to relive these moments and what you're trying to do is deliver like that, this feeling of awe and like um, just bring back like those, those just not necessarily memories, but the feeling they felt throughout the day. Um, and that's pretty much what this video I try to do. So keeping that with that kept in, with those thoughts in mind, um, that's how we decide like how I approach putting clips in. So here I just introduced a couple finally, right? And um, this is a nice shot during pretty much golden hour sunset, got that flare going on. Um, you don't get flares like this unless you have a pro mist or some type of mist filter diffusion. In this case, I use free will one eighth mist. So without it, this would be a lot harsher of a light, but with it, you get this nice halation. And that's why I like using mist filters. Um, so we push through and this shot is another just, all right, so this is where the music drops down and I wanted to do something, I guess, epic here for lack of a better word. So I just wanted like this, like silence, push-in shot of them um, standing there together in the wine cellar, which was somewhere the bride really wanted us to have a shoot at. So um, with that said, bam, slow, slow, and it builds into them. And here I just did a little bit of motion blur. Oh, I completely changed this. I actually decided not to do this at all, but let's just ignore this part because I was messing around with this the other day, seeing if I wanted to do this, but I decided not to. So we'll just ignore this little portion here because the actual video is different. Um, but anyways, that whole rotation effect is added on in post. The same way I did the drone shot at the beginning. Um, so if you want to sh find out how I exactly I did that, look at that. So what I could do for you now is I'll just take this up here, just put it here. Um, Actually, hold on. I'll just remove attributes. And you see the original shot was just a straight on shot uh, with no rotation, anything of that nature. Um, and then I'll just undo that. And now the attributes are back. And I did the scale in and the push in, dollar zoom, it all in post. 
And this is, you know, just now this is pretty basic, okay? This is just shots of the couple. Again, nice um, halation from the sun. Um, not really a big fan of this flaring that you get from mist filters and any other filter that you put in front of your camera, but it's okay. Uh, it gives it kind of a look, which I'm okay with. Um, I, do I prefer it not being there? Yes, but I would definitely prefer this nice bloomy uh, sun over no flare, but just harsh sun. Um, so I really like this glow from the mist filter. And then so here we have uh, just a shot of their, you know, I did this quick setup with like their invites and I put the ring there, focus on the ring and then the letters at the same time at the angle I was shooting at. And this just also has um, a slight uh, scale in and a positioning. So as you can see, I start the positioning low and it goes upwards. I make, it's like, a, it's originally, let me remove attributes again. Uh, crap. I am a douchebag. Remove attributes. Uh, I'll take all that out. So originally the shot is a completely still shot. Like I was not moving the camera at all. Um, you know, I was just holding it handheld and that was it. But then I added the effects. So this is how I could easily like shoot rings and, and stuff like that. Cause I know if I could just do, and you know, I shoot in 4k and I know I could do some movement and post, I can. So here I just did a scaling, which is I started at a hundred percent and I scaled it in to a roughly 108. So here's the keyframes for that. And then here I have the, uh, position, um, this just controls where the uh, image is like vertically. So I'm just doing a vertical keyframe to start off at the bottom and then it goes upwards. And as you can see, the vertical positioning is changing. That's how I added movement to this still shot. And then of course, now we're just going, we're just, again, um, computer is getting roughed up at the moment, but anyways, so now I just go through the ceremony. So I did this to like show the thing that I, the shot that I got, but also to cut away from this scene and now I'm at the ceremony. So it, it helps give the viewer a break of where they are and not just going from here and all of a sudden to ceremony, they go from here to an invite to a ceremony. So now there's just ceremony shots, um, back shot of the bride coming in with her dad, reaction shot of the groom. Can't really tell, not perfectly framed uh, by my second shooter, say Park, uh, but doable, okay? So there he is. I don't even think he's perfectly in focus either, but there he is with his reaction. Um, emotions getting to him, obviously. And a front shot of the bride and her dad. Um, another just shot of the uh, ceremony. And again, I'm doing some scale in here. So do it as you please. Uh, I add, added some warp stabilizers to this, but I, I didn't do like a perfect gimbal shot and the warp saber help, helped a little bit. And, um, you know, it just kind of gives like this effect. Uh, the scale in just gives it an effect that uh, I like to see in my footage to make it a little bit more cool, have it stand out a little bit. So that's what that is. And just, and again, on rhythm with music. So everything has to be on rhythm. And then this is just now, uh, again, we are, there's still the ceremony, right? We're about to leave the ceremony. Let's give the viewer a break of just showing some more nice detail uh, venue decoration shots. And now we're going back to the couple somewhere else. Now they're in another cellar. Again, this is a pretty dark area and the Sony 50 millimeter F1.2 did great. Um, just a shot of the couple there in the dark cellar room. Um, more couple shots with the nice halation bloom of the sun. And now we're into the reception and this is dancing. This is like one dance footage. 
another dance footage and I matched the cut with the shot from the second shooter wide angle from their end and then just ended this dance shot with just something where they're bringing each other back together. Um, so this like the dance sequence. Boom. So, so without the beat, I match it with like some other instrument. In this case, it's like whenever the violin is pretty much started over. Another drone shot, same thing as earlier. Uh, scale in, no rotation this time, but I definitely did the dolly zoom effect by using the scales. Uh, going from 120% to like 100% to get that dolly zoom effect on the drone shot. And of course, um, then I just go into more nice couple shots, venue shots, and a, a bride shot that I thought just was really nice looking. Um, um, There's another shot that the bride really wanted in front of like their prep cottage uh, where the, she got ready. And then here I just go into dancing, matching the beats with the music. And then here it goes into rapid fire um, because the music starts picking up the pace, picking up the beats. So I have a lot of multiple quick cuts of people dancing, the couple. Um, this is just to wrap things up, um, just to try to showcase other people there at the party real quick, match the music show some more couple shots and end it with their bubbles when they left their ceremony. And here I did uh, a bit of, did I do sound design? I did some sound design here. Uh, pretty much, I think it's just like a wind sound and did slow motion of the bubbles. And then I speed ramped it fast um, at the end to go into the, to the title. So it's just like a, Actually, there was no. There was actually sound design from the my camera of the people uh, uh, screaming. So slow motion, fast. Slow motion, fast. And uh, yeah, that's the edit. Um, you know, just kind of go through some of the techniques I used. Of course, there's sound design here, some wind sounds, um, some whoosh, building whooshes. Uh, a strong whoosh for the actual like transitional swipe and um, a lot of ambient sounds. So I do a lot of like wind sounds in my uh, videos. Um, yeah, that's about it. Like other than that, like I'm not sure how to else to explain um, how to edit these things, you know, like I do it a lot by feel and um, you know, I watch it as I'm editing, I watch it and see if it makes sense to me. Uh, I never went to film school and all this stuff. So like, I don't know all like these rules and regulations of like how to edit and people's psyche and all that stuff. But I do know that I could watch it myself and if I don't like something, then I fix it. And a lot of these things, I don't realize how, how it works well or why it works well until like after the fact when I watch it, I'm like, okay, that's probably why it works well is because I had a proper cut. Um, and you know, a lot of times once the music starts picking up, you could just start dropping in clips, match it with the beat. And generally speaking, it'll look pretty good. Um, you don't have to worry about too much of like matching motion, all that stuff, because it's just fast paced stuff towards the end here. But um, yeah, like, you know, I think the first thing to having a good edit is just making sure that things are shot well you know like if you don't shoot well uh it's gonna be very tough to edit no matter how hard you edit or how crazy you go with it it's still gonna look like absolutely unadulterated 100 percent grade a trash but um yeah i hope this is insightful i hope this helped um again if you like this kind of content please like and subscribe and until next time lighten up